I like to open every Friday show with the same question. If you've been listening to the podcast, you know exactly what I'm going to talk about. Uh, Chris, where on earth is college game day going for week 10? Uh, I've got five different options here, and we'll see which one makes the most sense to you. Obviously, we are recording this uh, for the Friday show. We won't know some of these results that could lead to next week, but we're, we're going to give our best guess as to what the ESPN producers are thinking for College Game Day. The only ranked-on-ranked matchup that I can foresee next week is going to be Auburn at Texas A&M. A&M has been playing significantly better. If Auburn gets a win over Ole Miss, that could be a good landing spot over in College Station. Uh, would you be excited at all about an Auburn-Texas A&M game day in College Station between two uh, two lost teams? Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't think... Like, looking for undefeated teams or one-loss teams is dumb. I, you know that. I've always uh, argued yeah. that. Like, give me the best matchup. It, give me the best <laughs> game. This should be a great game. It's an unbelievable atmosphere. That's, that's a fantastic place to go. And I don't know that they've been to College Station very often, but I know those fans would be fired up, especially with as well as Jimbo's Bunch has been playing here lately. So, I, yes, I could absolutely see that one being a good spot for them. Uh, I did write down Liberty at Ole Miss. If Ole Miss gets the win, uh, Liberty is playing UMass. They're favored by 36. I would imagine that they will probably get the win, but they do have two losses already on the season, and that is a noon game. So uh, it's not on a major network. It's on SEC Network. Uh, but the storyline around it is absolutely beautiful. Of course, with Hugh Freeze going back to Oxford to take on Lane Kiffin and that bunch. Auburn, yeah, but but yeah. ESPN doesn't want to talk about that storyline. Yeah, like, that's that's a one line in the byline of the game. Hugh Freeze going back to Ole Miss that's being fired in, in the NCAA stuff, and then they never want to bring it up again. They want to bring it up once, they don't want to bring it up again. See, that, this, there's zero chance they'll go to Ole Miss. You and I would have gone to Ole Miss. <laughs> Like if we were to if we were to do our own show, you know, live from whatever stadium or whatever campus, that's where we would be. Yeah, I don't know that I would. I don't know. I was super really? fired up about this game before the season started, but I thought I thought Liberty had a really good shot at coming in this game undefeated. And Liberty not only is has got two losses, it's not that they have two losses. They haven't they haven't been very impressive. And that's it. You're you're not wrong. Malik Willis I throwing interceptions. I want to go to a great game. I don't know that that's going to be a great game. I kind of. Uh, there's a world where Q, that's just been his Super Bowl all year. Yes. And they show up and they bring Ole Miss all they can handle. There's also a world where Ole Miss beats them by 25. Uh, true, true. Uh, I did write down uh, Wake Forest at North Carolina. I don't believe there's any chance that they go there uh, because of how bad North Carolina has been. I don't expect North Carolina to win Saturday night at Notre Dame. Uh, but Wake Forest undefeated, great story. If it were at Wake, then maybe. Maybe I could see that. Now, for yeah, the, if they're going to showcase Wake, they need to go to Wake. They yes. don't need to do a road game for them. They're the undefeated team. They're the one that needs to be heralded as uh, something special. I agree. I agree. The two that I think are the most likely. Uh, we'll start off with this one. If UTEP wins at Florida Atlantic this weekend, then you have got a one-loss UTEP team that is seven and one against an eight and O UTSA, and that could be fantastic. I mean, it's two Conference USA teams, but the storylines around it, game day in El Paso, that would be awesome to have game day right outside the Sun Bowl. Uh, because, though, look, there is a, a rabid fan base for UTEP football, and as bad as they have been for so long, the fact that they've actually got a pretty good football team and they've got maybe the biggest game on campus in a decade or two, I mean, it, this could really be a lot of fun because they don't ever go there. Right, those are the ones that we want to see. Is when you don't ever go there. I, I think I would like for that to happen if UTEP can get the win. You kind of feel the same. Uh, I mean, that's fine. I, I don't. I know this is me just being the curmudgeon. I, I just can't buy into the UTEP thing. Like, I don't. I, I don't know that they're a good football team. I know they're seven, six and one. They'll be seven and one. Like, if they win the game, but like, I don't. I don't know where these wins are coming from. And they, you know, they have not beaten a team that is uh, ranked efficiency wise in the top 100. So they, uh, yeah, they they have been feasting on bottom feeders. But when you're UTEP, I mean, you'll take any win you can get. So you know, well, I don't yeah, know that they're that a great team. Mean the rest of the country wants to watch you, you know, actually play a good team and get beat by 20. That's the problem. When you go to these places, that you know, it's encouraging bottom feeders. 
Like, yeah, okay. I I mean, I see where you're coming from. I just I, I know that that bunch will be very excited. UTEP's defense is legit this every year. Every school would be excited if you went there, Gary. True. Like no no one that not a, any one of the 130 schools out there would be like, damn. I can't believe game day's coming to my town. God, I wish you sons of bitches would go somewhere else. Nobody I, would say that. I, I think, uh, but I look at it completely, maybe not completely differently. I look at it a little differently because UTEP believes that they can beat anybody right now, anybody that's well, on their that, schedule. That, that, that's fine. I used to believe in the tooth fairy when I was a kid. That's okay. <laughs> one, one day I stopped doing that. I think it would be a lot of fun because I think UTEP would actually show up. They would make it an appointment to make sure that they were there on national television. It's much the same way that Memphis showed out when game day showed up in, what, 2019 or whatever it was. You know, those places there that it may never go again, like they make sure that they show out for those. The other one that I think is the most likely, Cincinnati has to play against Tulane this weekend. Uh, Tulsa, I don't think Tulsa matters at all in this. Tulsa is going to Cincinnati. I think that they are wanting to showcase Cincy. And, you know, you go to Nippert Stadium, all that good stuff. I think that that is the most likely because Cincinnati is almost guaranteed to win at Tulane. At, nothing's a guarantee in this sport. We get that. But they are 25-point favorites or whatever it is. So, it, so long as they win, I would imagine that ESPN's game day will go to Cincinnati for the Tulsa game next week. You kind of you kind of feel the same since there's no other ranked matchups. That's, yeah, that's one. I mean, because like I said, Cincinnati deserves the showcase. Cincinnati deserves to, to have the spotlight for a little bit on them, and, and if they continue to win and they continue to get style points, they, they've been beating the hell out of everybody, and they're doing it, it, the same thing that I said was going to happen eventually started happening. They're starting to get jumped by all these bigger name teams that look like shit at the beginning of the season, and, you know, whatever. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think that would help them out going forward. Uh, a game day appearance, you know, you get a big win. Tulsa is not uh, exactly a great football team. So, you know, a big win. On a, on a day when you host game day, that could end up being good. So I think that's where they will most likely end up. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.